and hello everyone, welcome back to your Lua tutorial. Today we will be covering what a module is. We'll be creating our own module. And if you're like, wait, module? Then it is basically what I've been talking about for like a while. I talked about the math module, the OS module. For example, os.exit. So here we go. This right here gets the exit function from this OS module. That is what it's basically doing. And here you can see a bunch of things we can get from the OS module. So yeah, this is the OS module. The same with math. If we go math dot and let's say apps for absolute. I mean, you are getting apps from the math module. So let's create our own module. So we can actually get a deeper dive on what's going on in here. So let's create our own math module. One with just basic functions, but it can do what we need. So here's my Lua file. It is, if I can open up my uh, folder here. Here we go, that's my Lua file. If I were to create a new document, and let's, cre let's create a custom module here. So I'm going to say mymath.lua. Whatever you call it, it's up to you. Save that, and now as you can see, we have a mymath.lua file. So let's go in here. And before I continue, let me just tell you, a module is basically a Lua file that returns a single table when called. This sounds maybe like mumbo jumbo to you, it's just a table. It just returns things that's inside of a table. So we're just returning a table to the user. You can also do it better with OOP and functions. And I will probably show you how to do that in the next video where we do talk about OOP. But even if I don't, you should be able to kind of figure it out even on your own. But we'll be working with tables for today just to keep everything simple. And a package is a collection of modules. So if you have like, let's say, five modules, then, that, then those five modules together is called a package. All right. So let's start here. Now we're going to call this math so it's going to have two m's and then ath just for math so and that is going to be our table and we're going to set that to an empty table because we want to return a table on the end of the day then here we can return math there we go so this is our module the most basic version of module it can't actually do anything but now we have a module and this return here at the end this works perfectly fine because this file right here is now a module so it will return this when we call it and I'll show you an example of this in a second so here we can say maybe a function and let's call this function add to add two things together let's say x and y so we're going to add two values together x and y we return x plus y thing is this is not part of the module to make this part of the module, you'll have to do this. You have to copy that. or You don't have to copy it. You can retype it if you want. And you just have to say dot. And this just adds that function. It would have been perfectly fine as well if you were to just go here and just, I guess, paste it in there as well. I guess this would have been perfectly fine in a sense. And just, you know, make it more table friendly. So, you know, do that and just say that is a function and whatnot just how you usually do it i just find it kind of tedious so i like to do this just to make it look a bit cleaner and easier to read now take note that this has to be a global function some of you might want to grind your teeth because you can't say local here at the front so local but if this is local then if we return this in math then we cannot use it because it is only local to this file. So local functions can only use identifiers as name, which means we cannot use local here. And in here with this, you can make that local. It's There's not a problem with it, although it is what gets returned. So this right here, that return at math, that we can keep that global because it's anyways going to be returned to outside files. So there's no reason in making it a local only item. 
because if it's local only and we return it to an outside file anyways, then there's no point in making it local because it's going to be used globally anyways. Anyhow, let's stop talking and actually use this. Now we want to import this, unlike with OS, which you can just say OS and then dot what we want to do. Here, we actually have to import it. So we can say local, and this you can make local. This doesn't matter because it's going to be local to this file. And I'm going to call this a math, just because I want to. You don't have to call it math. You can call this whatever you want. In fact, let's call it mod, just, just to make it easy. And we can say require, and here's the module name. And this module right there, it expects a Lua file. So it expects a dot Lua. So we can just say my math. And that will import this module from the file my math. And it's our own custom module. The reason we have to import it is because it's our own custom one. If it wasn't our own custom one and it was provided by, by Lua itself, we didn't have to. But this is also what you have to do if you maybe use a package manager for Lua. But that's out of the scope of this video. Let's continue. Now let's actually try and use it. So let's say print and we can say mod.add. And as you can see, it even auto completed. So mod. Dot, and as you can see, add. And here it says what it does. It takes in a number x, a number y, and then here it says what it does. It also returns a number. So we can say mod.add. And here let's say 5 and 10. Save that, and now, whoa, I almost rebooted my system there. Wow. Lua main dot Lua. And this should be Lua. Now, we only need to execute main dot Lua here because we are running main dot Lua, and main dot Lua is running my math dot Lua. That's why we only need to execute main dot Lua here. Run that, and we get 15 because our add function right here worked perfect. Lee. So just so we can get the hang of it, let's create another function here. So one of the more common functions you can also find in math libraries, so math, and it's the times function. You can times usually with it, or even power. Let's do power, power. And we can take in num1, because you don't need to say x or y, that can be whatever you want. And here we can just return num1 times or to the power of num2 so this carriage symbol right there just basically means make num1 to the power of num2 let's save that and use it here as well and also if you want to get rid of that blue line there you can just say underscore g dot and whoops and that will make sure that lua knows this should be global but it's optional. Now here, let's try and do something else. Let's go, and, and we can't can keep that as well. We can use the, this module anywhere any the amount of times we want. So now if we say dot this, and as you can see, we get power now. We go here, as you can see, this it just gives us the same thing. So it's very, very nice. Let's say two to the power of five. Save that, and let's see what we get. We get 32, because if we go here, Two times two that's four. Four times two that's eight. Eight times two that's sixteen. And sixteen times two is thirty-two. So that definitely works. That is how you work with modules. You can add more modules here and bring them all in. One module can even require a different module as well. Just like how I might want to use OS dot exit somewhere here, you can also make create your own module and just use it in here as well. But yeah. That is about it for modules. So now you also have a little bit of a, a backside on how OS.exit works or mm, what are math things, math.abs math or seal, you now know what's going on behind the scenes. And yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and can now create your own module. And I'll see you all again in the next Lua tutorial.